No, I was just going to say, I mean, the reason that I that I bring all this up and that I was re- bringing the back and forth, and, and as you correctly said, I mean, no one name called like that, but I think you guys have had back and forth on things. What I was just wondering as a fan, and I think a lot of people might be wondering, is like the difference in politics and how things have changed. Is that the reason we haven't seen a system of a down album in 15 plus years? No, that's got nothing to do with it. Okay. Sir, down and have a discussion about politics and and be okay with walking away and having a difference of opinion you know if we have if we happen to have one um that's got nothing to do with it you know we had, we were much more in line in 2005 when we made our last album Serge hasn't really wanted to be in the band for a long time you know uh and quite frankly we probably should have parted ways around 2006. we tried to get together multiple times to make an album but there were certain rules set in place um that made it difficult to do so and maintain the integrity of what system of down stood for you know so we couldn't really come together and agree and part of that is serge's fault and part of that is my fault and chavos and darren's as well but at the end of the day if you have you know a, a majority of the band thinking one way and one person thinking the other it's very difficult to come together and make music if that person is important you know, and every member of this band is very important to the overall sound of the band. And you'll know this by listening to anybody's side projects. They're never quite that good compared to system. You know, like, in fact, I think a lot of them aren't very good at all. And, uh, you know, when you compare that to what we do together as system, you understand why the team matters. And, and uh, having certain talents come together and be and merge matter, you know, and, and that magic that you can capture doing that matters. You know, no matter what, you know, Darren is uh, one of the best songwriters I've ever seen in my life. What he does with Scars will never be on the same level or league as System. That doesn't mean Scars is bad. It just means it's not System, you know, because at the end of the day, he doesn't have me playing drums. He doesn't have Shabo playing bass and bringing in certain uh, riffs and adding to Darren's music. And he doesn't have Serge bringing his melody and, uh, and lyrics into the play. You know, so it's all those things that make us system. But going back to the politics thing, yeah, like uh, I don't give a shit what anybody's politics are. There's room for everybody's politics. Just uh, I just want you to be as accepting as mine as I am as of yours. And you can hate my politics if you want, but just listen to it because you might gain some perspective. You know? For sure. When, when you say that you guys should have broken up at that time, I mean, then what's your perspective on, because I'm going to bro- mention it. You, so, okay. So you feel that you guys should not have made new music or. I think we should have moved on. And if Serge didn't want to be at the, in the band at that time, we should have just moved on and, and done it with somebody else, you know, but that's what happens when you're loyal and, uh, and you really want to make it work. You'll put up with things that uh, may be detrimental to the health of the band or the health of the situation. Maybe it would have been better if we moved on and got another singer for an album or two and continue to make music and brought Serge back later if he wanted to come back. You know, that probably would have been better. But as it is, I think we wasted 15, maybe 20 years of our lives waiting. You know? Yeah, so, yeah my, my question on that that I was going to ask, though, is, I mean, you guys still do live appearances, and I was going to say you're doing the Sick New World uh, not festival, the sick new world show, basically. I mean, it's an amazing lineup with corn, deftones, incubus, turnstile. I mean, it's a million bands to name. Chevelle, you guys are headlining. So, I mean, how do you feel doing these shows with with Surge and, and doing the shows that you guys have continued to do as a band and and you know and as a whole? You know, when we're actually on stage, it's great. It's just getting to that point that that is disheartening. You know, we we have one show booked for next year. One yeah. show. That's it. <laughs> is, is, I mean, is that by design, though? I mean, I'm a fan of bands like, for example, Glassjaw, right? And Glassjaw, I don't know if you know them, but they'll do they'll do a handful of shows every year. They'll go away for a couple of years. They'll come back, and there's still, like, that momentum for them. I know that they do other things. That, Like yourself, they have families. Um, Justin Beck runs that Merch Direct website. I believe that's the one he, he runs. So do, for you, is that just you guys getting older and not having the time to do a full tour and not wanting to be on the road like a Metallica? I think we would like to be working a lot more, but Serge also has a bad back now. 
Like he's messed up his back somehow. And uh, he just doesn't want to tour as much as the rest of us do. So we're like, look, if I, if my wife told me that we were going to have sex once a year, I'd be divorced. <laughs> it's a good analogy. You know, so you figure that out, you know, for what it is, but uh, I don't think this is sustainable. You know, like the rest of us want to work a lot more than he does. Now, I don't know if that means we're just going to break up and forget about it and call it a career or if we're going to move forward with somebody else, or if Serge is going to come around, you know, ultimately the best case scenario for me is Serge comes around and we can do like 15, 20 shows a year. Even that would be enough, you know, like we'd be able to go to places that we haven't gone in a long time and play in front of fans that have never seen us play. That's important to me. You know, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's really, even talking about system kind of bums me out. Yeah, because I know what our potential is and I know that if we make an album, you know, um, it'll be fantastic because we have songs that we, that we have been ready for five, six years now. We just have to go in and record them, you know, um, and I don't know if that's going to happen or not. And it's it's to me, that's like you only get one shot at life, you know, and make the best of it. And and we, you know, look at Tom Brady's like clinging on. Football, it's, it's, I believe that his relationship was over when he won the last Super Bowl. And Giselle came up to him, like, right, you know, the first thing she said was basically, you know, to the effect of, you have nothing left to prove, you know, like, basically quit. Instead of letting him have his moment, she had to throw that in there. And I think their relationship ended at that moment. You know, um, and I don't know either of them, so I don't know what their, you know, what their marriage was like. But I know that that would be disheartening to me, you know, and I, and I would, you know, really, you, you couldn't have said that maybe in two days or tomorrow or after the parade or, you know, when we're in Costa Rica in a week, you know, like there's a time and place for everything, you know. So um, I don't know why I brought up. Uh, oh yeah, Tom Brady. Like the, the guy's, just, the guy's doing everything he can to stay in this. He's still got the passion, even if his body's not reacting quite the way it used to. And um, I personally think he's going to end up in Las Vegas next year, playing for the Raiders. Even though I love the team that we have, you know, and I think our quarterback's great, but I think he's going to end up here. And I think uh, I imagine he'll get to twelve Super Bowls and quit. That's what I think is going to. The thing with with you guys, and I want to you know c- continue with that is there's so few bands that have the original lineup, and you guys still have that original lineup of what was on the first album. Uh, it's it, it's the classic lineup, and it sounds like for you, not just being on the road, you're thirsty to do new music as well, and not be a nostalgia act in the same realm as Guns and Roses. And as a Guns and Roses fan for years, people are like, "When are we going to hear new music?" And then they finally reunite with Slash and Duff, and it's like, "When are we going to hear new songs?" And they put out these two songs that sound like the reworks of stuff that Axel was doing prior. And and people do wonder why can't these guys just get back in a room and make a new album? It's just the pressure well, that it's not going to be on the level of Appetite for Destruction or Use Your Illusion, and people probably it, wonder that with System. It probably won't be very good. Number one, and number two. And this is part of the fear, I guess, of a lot of bands like us who haven't put out an album in so long, is that like, yeah, you, the last thing they heard was 25 years ago, right? For Guns N' Roses. Forget about that Chinese democracy crap. I'm talking about like real guns. I love that album, but okay. <laughs> Not Guns N' Roses. It's actual, you know, and that's fine. But the, the point is, if system comes out today and we make an album, it could be the best thing we've ever done. It could be, it could be in our, in our opinion, like the next level and all that. And people could look at it like, nah, no, it sucks. Right. I like toxicity. You know, I want to hear toxicity, but you gotta, the, you gotta have these albums coming out every two or three years so that your audience grows with you as you grow older and your motivations change and you know some of the fire dissipates but then you have passion for other things 
and they're going along that ride with you so that it's not like this massive shock of you went from this 35 year old person to a 50 year old person, right? Like there's a difference in, in the perception that these people have and their outlooks on life and everything else. I don't think the way I thought 30 years ago and everything, you know, like some things, but not everything, you know, and your music represents that, you know, as, as you grow older and, and wiser and, you know, there's a, there's the balance of that wisdom coming in. And then cause some of the fire that you had, the passion is overtaken by that wisdom, you know, like, and your music will represent that as well. And, and we don't have that. We have this whole era of nothing, you know? So, but like I said, the songs that we do have, they're going to fuck people up, dude. I mean, we still have it, you know, and it's, it's just a matter of, are we ever going to be able to show it? You know? It's so, part of the problem that let's just say you guys do put out a new album and it's the best thing you've ever done just as someone who observes the music industry, no matter how good this album is, it will never be as big as toxicity because that type of music is no longer played on radio. And there really is no rock radio and there is no MTV playing rock videos. Like there's no market for what was a giant thing in the late nineties and early two thousands. Yeah. It's, it's different now, you know, like uh, we're kind of, we're about as far removed as the music industry as it gets, you know, we, we don't have the slightest clue of how to put out an album, you know, uh, or if albums are even the way to do it these days, you know, like you just put out songs the way you did in the fifties. I don't, I don't even know. I wouldn't know where to begin, but that's not my problem. That's not my problem. That's for somebody else to figure out. My job is to go in and write drums that make these songs sound as good as possible. That's going to be my focus. I don't give two shits about what the marketing of it is how it's going to get out there. The people are going to gravitate towards it. They're going to enjoy it. And then there's there are going to be other people that don't, you know, and, and my purpose is strictly to make the songs as good as possible. And then to give it up and give it out to the world. That's it. What, what do the new songs sound like if they ever get recorded? They're going to, anybody making music today, like all the well-known bands, they're going to understand why system is what system is. Let's just put it that way. That's we're, cool. going to, we're going to remind them. I, I, I'm, I'm dying to hear it. And I think a lot of other people are too. Me too. <laughs> um,